Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, and how do you do? Come on in, come on in, and let us know who you are and where you are viewing from. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Boys, you don't... You don't want me to get off this. You do not want me to get off this live. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Let us know who you are and where you're viewing from. It's been a hot minute since Friday. 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 I did not come on yesterday because yesterday was my birthday. And I just went ahead and went through teaching homeschool. Uh, their daddy was off. We had some good time. We had so we got to good morning, Miss Tracy. I hope the invite alerted you so you could get it. And I, uh, we have a common thing that if you don't like share or comment every once in a while on the post you won't get the notifications but the ones that do tend to get the notifications when i go online so just try doing that um i did try to send some invites to the ones good morning pam good morning my beautiful mama to the ones that had uh, that told me that they were not getting the notifications. So, yes, Miss Tracy got hers and I sent it to Miss Loy if she's out there in TV land. But if you are viewing us on YouTube, go and like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for sure. And that way you'll know. By subscribing, you'll get our <clears throat> you'll get our uh, recordings. This you'll get the live on YouTube. You'll get the recorded version. But the more people I get there to subscribe to my channel, the closer we are to going live on YouTube. I have to have, I believe, I have to have. A thousand before I can go live. Maybe it's a hundred before I go live, and a thousand for something else. But I'm out when I get on there this afternoon. I'll see. But I gotta get I gotta get some more. I gotta get some more people to subscribe. So we're gonna talk about anointing the king this morning. So if you have any praise reports, prayer requests, if you have any comments or questions. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Beth Ramey. I am the devotion leader here, teacher of Coffee with Jesus. We come live every morning at 10 a.m. Monday through Friday unless um, I specifically tell you that we're not going to or take the day off like I did yesterday because it was my birthday. But generally, the norm is Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. And uh, we do post these a, a day or two behind on the, our own website, Coffee with Jesus, because I'm trying to grow the Facebook page, I mean the YouTube page, so I will upload it to YouTube, and then I'll put the link of YouTube on Coffee with Jesus, so other people that are not my friends, that are other people's friends that get invited to the group are able to see it. But yep, that's what we did, so... Anointing the king. Now, we know that Queen Elizabeth has passed. And we pray for her family. We pray for her children. We pray for her, um, her, her, anybody that knew her and was close to her. But one thing we always asked is, was she saved? From the outside looking in, because she reigned for so many years, she reigned for over for over seventy years. Um, she uh, was ninety. What was she? Ninety six years old, and being ninety six years old, she was able to right past seventy years. She was able to reign, and people would say, 
Well, was God's anointing on her? Well, because of the fact that she wasn't overthrown, the fact that she morally kept the laws and she had she was a respectable lady she would be like you have when you're when you're that you know people want to say this they want to say that they want to write books they want to do this they want to do that but all I want to say is nobody knows it seems that the anointing was on her. It seems like she was anointed when she was crowned queen after her father died. That it went to her. And it seems like that even though they've been some drama in the family and everything else. And this has went this way. And this good morning beautiful Karen. That this has went one way or the other. But it does seem like the anointing was on her. Because she was never overthrown. England was still under her reign. So that gets me to where we're at now. But no one knows her the condition of her souls. All I know is what she said about Jesus coming back. She did make a public statement that she was ready for Jesus to come back. And us as Christians know when we get ready to for Jesus to come back, we are not scared of death. We are not scared of of meeting Jesus. We are we want to go home. We feel like an alien in our own body, in our own home. But she did make the comment, Queen Elizabeth II made the comment that if Jesus was coming, when Jesus was coming back, she would be just so honored to lay her crown at Jesus' feet. So I wonder, did she know that in this next world, the eternal world, that she would not be queen? That her husband would not be king? That her son would not be king? That the king was King Jesus. And that the father was God the father, the creator. But anointings. Jews wanted a king so bad. A king so bad that Solomon, God sought Solomon out. And he anointed Saul. So Saul became their king. And we find that in 1 Samuel. And we go on to read that God had certain expectations for when a king is anointed. God wanted him to obey. God wanted him to respect and go by Samuel the prophet words that Jesus gave to him because Jesus didn't speak straight to Paul he spoke to the prophet he spoke to the man of God and the man of God gave word to Saul but Saul could feel God's presence God could feel that he was in there so let's read a little bit here in God's word We find out that Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now go therefore, listen to the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I have noted that Amalek did to Israel in opposing them on the way that they came out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction and all they have. Do not spare them, but kill both men and women, child, infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. And this is in this is in First Samuel fifteen. So Saul summoned the people and numbered them in Telem, two hundred thousand men on foot and ten thousand men of Judah, 
And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid in wait in the valley. When Saul said to the Canaanites, Go, depart, go down from among the Amalek, the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all people of Israel when they came out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the, the Amalekites. And Saul defeated the Amalekites from Haval, Haval as far as Shahur, which is east of Egypt. And he took Agog, the king of the Amalekites, alive. He didn't kill him like God told him to do. And devoted to destruction all the people with the edge of his sword. So he killed everybody but the king. But Saul and the people spared Agai, the best of the sheep, and of oxen, and, and the fatted calf, and of the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. All this was despised and worthless. They devoted to destruction. The word of God came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me, and has not performed my commandments. And Saul was angry, and he cried to the Lord all night. And Samuel rose up early to meet Saul in the morning, and it was when he told Saul, Come out to Carmel, and behold, set up a monument for himself, and turned and passed and went down to Gala. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed be you to the Lord. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. And Samuel said, What then? Is this bleating of the sheep in my ears and lowing for the oxen that I hear? Saul said, They have brought them out of the Amaleks, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord our gods, and the rest have devoted to destruction. And Samuel said to Saul, Stop! I will tell you what the Lord said to me this night. And he said to him, Speak! And Samuel said, Though you are little in your own eyes, you are not the head of the tribes of Israel. The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord set you out on a mission and said, Go devout to destruction the sinners and the Amalekites and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then do you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you pounce on the spoil? And what was the evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on a mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I have devoted the Amaleks to destruction. And the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen and the best of the things devoted to destruction to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gala. And Samuel says, Has the Lord as great delight in burning office offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the lord of god behold to obey is much better than sacrifice and to listen than to fat of rams for rebellion is the sin of divin of div uh, divination and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the lord he has also rejected you from being king being king. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned for I am transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. I'm going to stop there for a minute. If you are so consumed with your constituents, if you are so consumed with politics, if you are so consumed with the world around you, you're not going to heed God's voice. Even though he gives you a prophet to listen to, he was more worried about what they were saying and that they didn't need to destroy this and they needed to take that. That even though God loves the smell of burnt offerings, it is not better to ask for forgiveness later than ask for permission first. They knew they did not have permission to do what they were doing, but they did it anyway. That's not what God wanted them to do. That's not what God wanted him to do. That's He was trying. 
God in his magnificent way, his ways are always good, was trying to keep these sinful pagan people from overthrowing Israel. And he was only king of Israel because God anointed him to. And you're like, well, Beth, there's a lot of people in our government that is there. Don't you think God put them in that position? I believe he probably did at the start. He put them in that position because he knew that they could do the work. Or he put that in them pos that position because other things that he prophesied, like our president in the White House right now, people were wondering, well, why in the world did God allow that election to be tampered with? There's no way he could be in, the, in there. But sin abounds. Sin abounds each and every day and grows deeper and deeper, thicker and thicker, and more and more like a cloud of ash that's falling. It's just covering people's eyes. It's getting you numb to the fact. You know, just because the king or the president says it, doesn't mean that it comes from God. But the media wants to play it that way. Everybody wants to play it that way. You know, you've got people, you've got the king of England. He signed the papers to take on and was crowned the other day. But his coronation will take place probably at the first of the year and everything. And it's a big old gala and it's this, that, and the other. But you know what? I'm at my mind's heel. That the inauguration, the coronation, every time somebody takes office and this, that, and the other, money could be best sent, spent elsewhere. Time and energy can be best spent elsewhere. Spreading the gospel. Loving on people. Like I said, I, had, I have no idea what her, Queen Elizabeth's, what her relationship her spiritual relationship was with god the father only her and god know her god and jesus and the holy spirit the trinity we know that she reigned a certain way we know that there was going to be some changes going on we know that right now it seems like king prince charles the third has been appointed king until he passes or can't do the job anymore, then it will fall to his son. And the reason why this world has kings and queens is because Israel, the tribe of Israel, needed and wanted a king. So they got it. They got a king. They couldn't. Just go by the law of Moses, the law that Jesus put down. No, they had to have a king to reign over them. So this is what they got. So they got a king because all the other people, pagan nations, had a king. So why not them? Well, the anointing. If you don't follow what God says, the anointing is going to be pulled away from you. It's going to leave you. So we're going to jump down to Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 16, 14. And it tells you right there. Now, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. It tormented him to the point that all the way, if you jump all the way to 1 Samuel 28, that God is not with him anymore. He fights against, David has been anointed. He knows David has been anointed. And it's just the fact that God is not crowned David as king of yet. That's all going to come in play all throughout the rest of First Samuel. And how Jonathan... And y'all need to come pick up these battleship pieces. And about how Jonathan and David become best of friends. And how Saul 
at every turn wants to kill David because he's so jealous of him because he has the anointing on him. The anointing went away from, was pulled away from Saul through Samuel because of the fact that he disobeyed God. He would rather ask for forgiveness than ask for permission when it came to doing stuff at that one time. God told him to do it this way and kill everybody. And he did it this way and saved the oxen and stuff like that. God has a rhyme or a reason. And the rhyme or the reason was not, was to kill everything because the demons, the bad spirits, the paganism, everything that they worshipped, everything that they touched was connected to idolatry. Was nothing about God. Nothing of those actual people that they fought against was a tribe of Israel. So, there's no reason why they should keep them. God wanted everything that was sinful to be destroyed. Everything that was sinful to be destroyed. The oxen, the lamb, the babies, uh, the children, the older people, everything to be destroyed. Just like that. And because he disobeyed God, and let the sin live. Let the idolatry live. God pulled his anointing. Well, I can't trust him to do what I tell him to do. Even though I gave him the word through Samuel, I cannot trust him to do what I tell him to do. So I'm going to pull the anointing from him. And I'm going to give Samuel the word. And he's going to go and he's going to go anoint another. And he anointed in 1 Samuel 16, 13, he anointed David. Yes, he did. He anointed David to the point to where it just makes it makes uh, Saul so mad that he didn't hear from God. So in 1 Samuel 28, he goes to seek a median. The evil side of it. To try to communicate with Samuel. Because of the fact that he wants to know why God's not talking to him. You can ask for forgiveness all you want. But God knew. God knew that the forgiveness was not real. The forgiveness was only there because he got caught. The forgiveness was there because... He couldn't because it tells us right there. If you if you just keep on, go back to uh, sixteen fourteen. Sixteen fourteen. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. What was that spirit from the Lord? It was loneliness, and that's what we have when we are lost. People don't understand that. They're always looking. Lost people are looking for something. They are tormented by that spirit. And that spirit is loneliness. Not having a relationship with the Father. Not having the Father in their life. Not having that love. Not having that comfort. Not having that knowledge. And the only way that we can do that in our day and age is to repent of our sins because Jesus already came. He died on the cross for our sins so we need to repent and we need to ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart and save our soul. We do, we do, we do. Now when Jesus comes into your life and he makes you a new creature, you're a new creation, and he comes into your life, you have the anointing on you. No one can ever pluck you out of the Father's hand. If you were truly saved in your soul and not in your head, 
If you are saved and the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart, that anointing is always going to be there. Now you have to cultivate it. You have to let it take root. You have to grow it. And how do you grow it? By getting into the Word. By studying. By doing what God See, We don't have to go to the prophet of God. We don't have to have Samuel as our intercessor to talk to God for us. We have Jesus Christ as our intercessor. We can talk through Jesus to God. We can get those things. We can get those thoughts out. We can get what we need when we pray. When we get down on our knees, we can get all that. We can lay it all out on the cross. God says... Jesus says, come to me, all of you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He couldn't find Jesus. He couldn't find Samuel. He went to a median trying to seek Samuel, to bring Samuel back so he could find out where Jesus, where God was. But bottom line is, God is right there. He's... We hold out our hand, and he's at our fingertips, just like when I was a little girl, and my daddy taught me how to swim. I'd get up on the, I'd crawl up on the back of his shoulders, and he would put it, my hands in his, in his hands like this, and he would push me off, and I would, he would throw me out in the deep. And then he would just put his hand out, so I knew I wouldn't drown, but I made my way back to him. God is got his hand out and all you got to do is come back to him if you are backsliding and you don't have the anointing on you anymore it doesn't mean that anybody has plucked you out of the father's hand it means that you don't have a relationship with God right now it means that you truly have to get it together you have to realize first thing I do when I wake up I need to pray Second thing I do when I get up, I need to put on the whole armor of God because Satan's going to be attacking me left, right, and up, down, and around. And that I need to be about the Father's business. And yes, we have kids to raise. We have homeschooling to do. We have jobs to go to. We have doctor's appointments. We have babies. We, we, have, we, we have a life, and God knows that. But it's just like this this little boy. Come here, Elijah. I'm here, I'm here. It's just like this little boy. When you raise them in the way that they should go, tell them what you were singing when you were doing your homeschooling this morning. I can't remember. You can't remember? No, I know what I was singing. I forgot the name of the song. Well, sing the words to them. Or hum it to you. Do you remember? No. What a day oh, yeah. that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saves me by his grace. Thank you. And for these little boys, they're sitting here doing their homeschooling. And, you know, he could have had some some Hot Wheel commercial in his head. He could have had, he was watching Phineas and Ferb this morning. He could have had that little, that little introduction things, but it wouldn't. It was a Bible hymn. It was, what a day that will be. That's in the heart. That shows that that boy's anointed. That shows that that boy has Jesus in his heart. That means that he's being taught right. Even though he gets on my everlasting nerves sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, we need to get on. We need to get on with it. We need to move. We need to. But when he's sitting here and he's concentrating, what's in his heart? What's in his mind? Jesus. Jesus. That's not what was in Saul's mind. He was trying to hide it from God. And then trying to blame it on other people, trying to blame it on his constituents, trying to blame it on his, on his, uh, on his audience, his people, his, uh, what do you call them when you're in the kingdom, your people, I don't know, 
it just flew out of my mind. But this new king that got anointed in Britain, in England, people are going to notice if he doesn't reign like his mother, if the anointing of God is not with him. And you know how they're going to know? But it's because if he starts letting pagan things come in like Saul did. If he lets the idolatry come in. And I'm not saying she was perfect. Like I said, I don't know. I just know how she reigned. And I know how her morals were. And yes, she was a Catholic and blah, 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 blah. And things were like that. But it comes down to the at the end of the day, was she saved? Nobody can answer that. But her, but we know through her reign that she had empathy and that she reigned. Good morning, Delia. She reigned with a moral stick. So, but in our page of our history, if you go back years, her kin folks that were anointed her dad her own father only reigned for a little bit and he was taken out the Lord took him home the Lord saw fit to let her reign for over 70 years but that made me smile when I heard I heard that look well, when Jesus comes, I want to lay my crown at his feet. And that's the way that we should be too. We don't have a physical crown like Queen Elizabeth had. And she wasn't able to take any of those crowns with her. I know she was speaking metaphorically and she might even have been talking about her robes and crowns that she got for being saved and leading people to Christ because you don't know. We don't know. Y'all know because I've told y'all that I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. And you see that by the fruits that I bear. That's the only thing you can judge anything on is to their fruits. Are they bearing fruit? Good morning, Miss Sue. Are they bearing fruit? Are they? The anointing one's on her for a while, and now it's on her son. So let's see what job Prince Charles, now King Charles, can do. Is he gonna do? Is he gonna do a godly reign, or is he gonna do a sinful reign? This world has been wicked, sinful since sin came into the world. I love you too, Miss Sue. Um, to, and even to the point where God was so sorry that he made man that he destroyed him with the flood. And God was sorry that he put Saul in that position. So he took the anointing away and gave it to somebody else. But my question is, are you anointed today? Have you been anointed by God? Do you feel God in your life? If you don't, then number one, if you're saved, you're backslidden. And number two, if you're not saved, there's a way to get saved. There's a way to ask God to forgive you of your sins. And ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save your soul. You become a new creature in Christ. You will be anointed with the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing like being anointed with the Holy Spirit. But you can be saved. And the anointing come on you. And then it just stays stagnant. Like an old bucket of water that you don't pour out. You just start stinking. Because you don't do anything. Your salvation is locked in. But you never do anything from God. For God, you never get that anointing. You never feel the Holy Spirit moving around you. I'm telling you, there'll be times where I'm sitting here teaching y'all 
and the Holy Spirit will come over me. Oh, me, the anointing that comes on. And I always ask for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God's Word when I, when I bring forth a devotion. And I know when I'm, when I'm lacking and when I'm not, because the Holy Spirit says, well, Beth, you, you didn't study real hard about that one. You missed the mark on that one. There's something, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit will impress on me. Well, is it sin that separates me? The reason I can't connect with God that day? Is it because my mind's over yonder? Is it because I don't feel good? The Holy Spirit's going to let me know. But when the anointing is strong, oh my goodness, you get Holy, Holy Ghost goosebumps. You can feel the Spirit. You can, you can feel it. You can feel God sitting beside you. You know God's before us. He's beside us. And He's behind us. You know, and we take that for granted. And I'm thankful for it. But sometimes I, th I take it for granted. Especially, you know, when you sit down and your time management is not right and you go to play your game on your phone when you really should be studying for the next day's devotional or when you decide to, you know, not do what you know that God has planned out for you to do or you don't speak to somebody that God wanted you to speak to. You know, you're in the store and you felt the Holy Spirit come upon you and the anointing and you should have talked to this person and then you walk away because, you know, you're just lazy and you're like just walking on or you see somebody that you know that needs God and you know of them, but you turn and you go down another aisle and go halfway across the store to ignore, to ignore them and not... Because you don't want to deal with them. You don't want to deal with their drama. It's not up to you to say whether you're going to talk to them or not. It's up to God. Because God put you in that place in that time. And it's up to Him. He may not. He may have y'all crossing paths. And all you have to say is, Hi, how are you? How are you, beautiful? And then that person just goes, but... Not always does the Holy Spirit want you to talk. The Holy Spirit doesn't want you to fix things. Sometimes you're just being anointed at that moment just to give somebody an encouraging word, a smile. Just calling somebody beautiful. Have you tried it before? Or have you truly tried calling somebody beautiful? Not that it should be habit forming, but it should be the way that you see your brothers and sisters of Christ. It's calling them handsome and beautiful. When you're in the store and everything, and you uh, uh, hold the door open for somebody, just say, you know, like there was this gentleman. He held the door open for me and the boys the other day. And I said, well, thank you, handsome. That was so nice of you. And just the look on his face, like he had never been called handsome before. You know, women get called beautiful all the time, but men, they don't generally get told that they're handsome. You know, so just an encouraging world, a smile on your face to know God. People will know that you've been anointed by God if you are about the Father's business. How does your anointing fall? Are you going to be that next anointed person? Are you going to be the next saved person? The next anointing Christian? Christian, brother and sister, have you been anointed? Lost person, have you been anointed? And the question is going to be no for y'all. Because of the fact that you have to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart through repentance of your sin. you got to ask God to forgive you of your sins. And then you got to ask Jesus to come into your heart and save your soul. Then the anointing from the Holy Spirit is on you. The only way that you can have an anointing is through repentance salvation, and a relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't
forego your relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. And we thank you for the anointing that we don't have to be king or queen down here on earth. All we have to do is be saved through your grace. Lord, we know that you came and you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. And your blood paid the debt, the, the sin debt for me. And I know without you that I would be in hell. And I deserve that hell. But Lord, thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing on me through salvation, through your blood. Lord, I pray if there's anyone out there that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord, I ask for today be the day of repentance. And I ask that today be the day that they accept you as their Lord and Savior through asking Jesus Christ to come into their heart and save their soul. It's just as easy as that. Repenting of your sins and asking Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save your soul. It's that easy. But being a Christian is not easy. But being a lost person is not easy either. Life. Sin. Sin is life. Life is sin. But to have salvation is to be sinless, is to be righteous, is to have salvation, that one day we will go and live with him in heaven. Lord, I pray for all prayer requests that have been put up here in the last week or so. Lord, I ask that you continue to be with them, Donna's family, Delia's family, Miss Sue's family, Lenore's family, Alicia's family, Karen's family, uh, <clears throat> Miss Lloyd's family, Miss Karen's family, Miss Pam's family, Miss Donna's family, Miss Tara's family, Miss Penny's family. And Lord, if I've missed anybody else, I apologize. But Lord, just I just ask that you just lift them up. Emmy's family. Lord, I just ask that you just please be with Tracy and her family and Chad and, and all of our our faith family at church. Lord, I just ask that you just lift up them. I ask you to lift up my sister and I ask you to lift up my mama. Lord, I thank you for the birthday. I thank you for allowing me to have another year to spread your word. But it would not hurt my feelings if you came today. So come, Lord Jesus, come. And that appointed time as that last soul gets to saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alrighty. Y'all just remember, we'll be back tomorrow at 10. And until then, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I love you and God does too. Y'all have a great day.